Hey guys, I'm going to do uh, smaller videos on the Akuma. I've got a lot of things I want to talk about on it, but um, if I try to make a long video covering a bunch of things, um, it's just never going to come out. So um, I'm just going to do small videos of little things as they as I work my way through them. Um, there's a disclaimer on this video. I don't even know I'm going to get people complaining or somebody saying something about it, but um, I have a problem on the machine with the oiler and I need to find out where the actual problem is, but I'm working my way through it and so I need my machine up and running and currently it throws an error every eight seconds. So I've, this is what I'm doing in the meantime to make my machine work while I figure out what the problem is. So the problem is, is it keeps throwing a pump flow error and um, saying that the, the oil's not getting through the system. Um, the oil appears to be getting in most of the locations. Um, it's really hard to follow everything because the manifolds just split off and split off and split off. Um, we had a Akuma guy out here that looked at another problem. Uh, we had a, a drive go out on my uh, W axis or the subspindle, and he didn't really want to even mess with it, um, basically. So um, I'll go through the troubleshooting that I've done and what I've done to actually make it work temporarily until I can get the problem solved. All right, so here's the cap. Um, you know, the oil tank is usually here. Here's the cap. Um, this is an older one off of a machine. I, I, this doesn't, it's kind of rusty. This one doesn't work. Um, so there's a float um, to let you know the oil level. The, like I said, the tank goes here. This motor spins like an impeller in here that feeds to a manifold. And this manifold goes out to this device and also out to uh, another manifold that starts splitting out to the machine. Now, I'm going to pull this out. So this is just a little switch here. And what happens is the, 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 when the pump kicks on, it feeds oil up into, into the bottom of here, pushes this piston up against this spring, and causes it to come out the top and hit this switch. So if there's enough pressure, the little piston will come up and hit this switch. This switch tells the machine that, hey, uh, the oil was up to the right pressure, and then it waits for that switch to come back down. If that switch doesn't come back down, it also throws the error because it thinks that uh, there's a blockage or something in the line. So I was just gonna originally hotwire this so that it would always say, you know, that it had been pushed, but that didn't work because it's on some sort of timer that checks to see if it's, uh, you know, the pressure ever bleeds down. Okay, so the guy that was out here said this pump should have 200 PSI. I don't know about that. I don't know how this tiny little motor that spins an impeller is going to build up 200 PSI in here. I mean... I, I could be wrong, but I, I don't know how that's possible. So what happens is, is the oil is, I disconnected it where it comes out, basically here, and tested the pressure. And um, I mean, I didn't test the pressure, I just watched it come out. And the oil is coming out, but it's not coming out in any hard spray or anything. So... Um, I don't know if it's beyond this point that the pressure is a problem or in in the in the pump itself. So the first thing we did was block this off to see if with no other exits but this um, sensor here would it be able to trigger and it wasn't. Um, there's nothing clogged in the line here um, but it's not able to trigger it so the pump with, with this being plugged off, there's no other place for the oil to go, so it should build up enough pressure to do it unless there's something wrong with the pump. So there may be a problem with the line, you know, something in the line, one of the manifolds down the way, but I think there's a problem in the pump uh, because of it's not able to just with itself trigger that switch. So... Until I can get that figured out, I've had to kind of rig some stuff up to make it work, and I'll show you that here 
in a second. And again, disclaimer, I plan on solving the problem, but until I can get there, I have to have some way to test it um, and run the machine because it triggers an error every uh, eight seconds, I believe it is. Okay, here is the actual pump on the Akuma. And you can see the switch is right down there to the left. I don't know if you can actually see it. And here's all the wiring up top. So this wire here, I've got this, like I said, rigged because I had to get it working and I'm actually gonna rewire this today and I'll show you that in a minute. But here's the power off the motor and here's where the switch was connected. It connected over here on these two pins, I believe six and seven. So what happens, what I did now is I took this power out of here, I ran it to a wall wart for a uh, monitor, just happened to be the, about the right voltage. Ran that up to a relay. So basically when the motor turns on, it gives that enough power to trigger the relay. The relay then connects this, these two, these two wires saying that the switch has been pushed. Then when the motor stops running on a timer, that clearly will, you know, the, there'll be no more power to the relay, and then the relay will drop off and this will then get disconnected. So the machine itself will see, hey, I've got pressure, and then after the motor turns off, it'll, it'll act like the pressure dies down, um, which basically tricks the machine into thinking everything's working good. Um, so let me go ahead and redo this stuff and make it a little better with some Amazon stuff and uh, I'll be right back Okay, so I have the switch connected to the uh, normally open um, So that when it powers on it'll actually trigger the switch the power here runs to the motor So when the motor when it powers up this little motor of the pump This will get power this light should come whoops This light should come on, which is when it's triggering, triggering the relay, closing that switch, and then it should go off after it's done pumping for, I don't know, 10 seconds. Okay, so the pump has come on. It's pumping oil. The switch has been triggered. Alright, so now the motor has turned off, it has turned this off and killed the switch. So that should act exactly how it should. Now like I said, we pulled this off and capped it, so there was nowhere for the oil to go other than the switch down here, and it didn't have enough pressure to push that switch up. So I've got to look at, so I think there's something wrong in the pump area itself. Everything is running. But I don't know, I've checked the filters and replaced the filter and cleaned everything out. Even took apart the uh, little piston thing, cleaned everything out. So I'm not sure what the next step is. Um, but this is the next step to at least keep me running. The machine gets full of oil. So I know there's oil going into the machine. I don't know if it's hitting every oil spot or not. Um, you can look here and see all the tramp oil that's been pulled out of here. Um, and that little pump thing is a video coming up. Thanks for watching.